Hello, everyone. Welcome to another wonderful morning of readings. I will share my screen now. Okay. So here are some pictures. Now, this one is very dear to me um, because this is where I'm from, southern Nigeria. West Africa. And so the name of this reading is Folk Stories from Southern Nigeria, West Africa by Elphinstone Darrell. This is a picture of a juju mask from Igbo country, Southern Nigeria. Folk Stories from Southern Nigeria, West Africa by Elphinstone Dayrell, FRGS, FRAI, District Commissioner, Southern Nigeria, with an introduction by Andrew Lang, with frontispiece, Longman's Green and Company, 39 Paternoster Row, London, New York, Bombay, and Calcutta, 1910. I apologize if you hear some sound. I just need to adjust. Okay. Contents. Frontispiece from a drawing in color by Major G.M. de L. Darrell. Introduction. The tortoise with a pretty daughter. How a hunter obtained money from his friends, the leopard, goat, bush, cat, and cock, and how he got out of repaying them. The woman with two sin skins. The king's magic drum. Itzwen and the king's wife. Of the pretty stranger who killed the king. Why the bat flies by night. The disobedient daughter who married a skull. The king who married the cock's daughter. Concerning the woman, the ape, and the child. The fish and the leopard's wife. Or, why the fish lives in the water. Why the bat is ashamed to be seen in the daytime. Why the worms live underneath the ground. The elephant and the tortoise. Or, why the worms are blind and the elephant has small eyes. Why a hawk kills chickens. Why the sun and the moon live in the sky. Why the flies bother the cows? Why the cat kills rats? The story of the lightning and the thunder. Why the bush cow and the elephant are bad friends? The cock who caused a fight between two towns. The affair of the hippopotamus and the tortoise. Or why the hippopotamus lives in the water. Why dead people are buried. Of the fat woman who melted away. Concerning the leopard, the squirrel, and the tortoise. Why the moon waxes and wanes. The story of the leopard, the tortoise, and the bush rat. The king and the juju tree. How the tortoise overcame the elephant and the hippopotamus. Of the pretty girl and the seven jealous women. How the cannibals drove the pe people from Insofan Mountain to the cross river, Ikum. The lucky fisherman. The orphan boy and the magic stone. The slave girl who tried to kill her mistress. The king and the insiat bird. Concerning the fate of Esido and his evil companions. Concerning the hawk and the owl. The story of the drummer and the alligators. The insasak bird and the odudu bird. The election of the king bird. The black and white fishing eagle. Today, we will be reading the introduction and the tortoise with a pretty daughter. Introduction. Many years ago, a book on the folk tales of the Eskimo was published, and the editor of the Academy, Dr. Appleton, told one of his minions to send it to, send it to me for a revision. 
By mischance, it was sent to an eminent expert in political economy, who never suspected any error, took the book for the text of an interesting essay on the economics of the blameless Hyperboreans. Mr. Dayrell's folk stories from southern Nigeria appealed to the anthropologist within me, no less than to the lover of what children and older people call fairy tales. The stories are full of mentions of strange institutions, as well as of rare adventures. I may be permitted to offer some running notes and comments on this mass of African curiosities from the crowded lumber room of the native mind. The tortoise with a pretty daughter. The story, sorry, please pause. Okay. The story, like the tales of the dark native tribes of Australia, rises from that state of fancy by which man draws, at least for purposes of fiction, no line between himself and the lower animals. Why should not the fair heroine, Adet, daughter of the tortoise, be the daughter of human parents? The tale would be none the less interesting and a good deal more credible to the mature intelligence. Where the ancient fashion of animal parentage is presented, it may have originated, like the stories of the Australians, at a time when men were totemists, when every person had a bestial or vegetable family name, and when, to account for these hereditary names, stories of descent from a supernatural, bestial, primeval race were invented. In the, t in the fables of the world, speaking animals, human in all but outward aspect, are the characters. The fashion is universal among savages. It descends to the Buddha's Jataka, or parables, to Aesop and La Fontaine. There could be no such fashion if fables had originated among civilized human beings. The polity of the people who tell this story seems to be despotic. The king makes a law that any girl prettier than the prince's 50 wives shall be put to death with her parents. Who is to be the Paris and give the fatal apple to the most fair? Obviously, the prince is the Paris. He falls in love with Miss Tortoise, guided to her as he is by the bird who is entranced with her beauty. In this tribe, as in Homer's time, the lover offers a bride price to the father of the girl. In Homer, cattle are the current medium. In Nigeria, pieces of cloth and brass rods are, or were, the currency. Observe the queen's interest in an affair of true love. Though she knows that her son's life is endangered by his honorable passion, she adds to the bride price out of her privy purse. It is a long courting. Four years pass, while pretty Adet is our young to marry yet. The king is very angry when the news of this breach of the Royal Marriage Act first comes to his ears. He summons the whole of his subjects. His throne, a stone, is set out in the marketplace, and a debt is brought before him. He sees and is conquered. It is no wonder, said the king, this tortoise girl might be a queen. Though a despot, his majesty, before cancelling his law, has to consult the eight Igbos, or heads of secret societies, whose magical powers give the sacred sanction to legislation. The Igbo, see page four, note, is a mumbo jumbo man. He answers to the bogey, who presides over the rites of initiation in the Australian tribes. When the Igbo is about, women must hide and keep out of the way. The king proclaims the canceling of the law. The Igbos might resist, for they have all the knives and poisons of the secret societies behind them. But the king, a master of the human heart, acts like a Sir Robert Walpole. He buys the Igbo votes with palm wine and money and gives a feast to the women at the marriage dances. But why does the king give half his kingdom to the tortoise? When an adventurer in fairy tales wins the hand of the king's heiress, he usually gets half the kingdom. The tortoise is said to have been the wisest of all men and animals. Why? He merely did not kill his daughter. 
but there is no temptation to kill daughters in a country where they are valuable assets and command high bride prices. In the Australian tribes, the bride price is simply another girl. A man swaps his sister to another man for the other man's sister, or for any girl of whose hand the other man has the disposal. 2. The second story is a very ingenious commercial parable. Never lend money. Please pause. The second story is a very ingenious commercial parable. Never lend money. You only make a dangerous enemy. The story also explains why bush cats eat poultry. Three, the woman with two skins is a peculiar version of the story of the courteous Sir Gawain with his bride, hideous by day and a pearl of loveliness by night. The juju man answers to the witch in our fairy tales and to the mother-in-law of the prince, who by a magical potion makes him forget his own true love. She, however, is always victorious, and the prince prepares another marriage, their hearts so full of love and glee, and ousts the false bride like Lord Bateman in the ballad when Sophia came home. In this case of Lord Bateman, the scholialist Thackeray probably suggests that his lordship secured the consent of the church as the king in the tortoise story won that of the Igbos. Our tale then wanders into the fairy tale of the king who was deceived into drowning his children in European folklore because he is informed that they are puppies. The water juju, however, saves these black princes and brings forward the rightful heir very dramatically at a wrestling match where the lad overthrows more than he thought, like Orlando in As You Like It, and conquers the heart of the jealous queen, as well as his athletic opponents. In the conclusion, the jealous woman is handed over to the ecclesiastical arm of the Igbos. She is flogged, and as in the case of Jeanne d'Arc, is burned alive and her ashes were thrown into the river. Human nature is much the same everywhere. Four, the king's magic drum. The drum is the mystic cauldron of ancient Welsh romance, which always provides plenty of good food and drink. But the drum has its drawback. The food goes bad if its owner steps over a stick in the road or a fallen tree, a taboo like the geishas, geishas, of ancient Irish legends. The tortoise in this tale has the Gesa's power. He can make the king give him anything he chooses to ask. This very queer constraint occurs constantly in the Cuchulain cycle of Irish romances and in The Black Thief. You can buy it for a penny in Dublin or read it in Thackeray's little tour in Ireland. The king is constrained to part with the drum but does not tell the tortoise about the taboo and the drawback. The tortoise, though, disappointed, at least pays his score off in public, and then the tail wanders into the hop of my thumb formula and the trail of ashes. Finally, the story, like most stories, explains the origin of an animal peculiarity, why tortoises live under prickly tie tie palms, that explanation was clearly in the author's mind from the first. But to reach his point, he adopted the formula of the mystic object, drum or cauldron, which provides endless supplies and has a counteracting charm attached to it, a taboo. Five, Itzwan and the King's Wife. Some of these tales have this peculiarity, that the characters possess names as Itzwan, Ofyang, and Atem. They are thus what people call sagas, not mere Martin. All the pseudo-historic legends of the Greek states, of Thebes, Athens, Mycenae, Pylos, and so on, are folk tales converted into saga. 
and adapted and accepted as historical. Some of these Nigerian fairy tales are in the same cast. The story of Atamas, of Iokos, and the sa sacrifice of any of his descendants who went into the town hall exactly corresponds to the fate of these Nigerian fairy tales. Ooh. To the fate of the family of Itwe, page 32. The whole Atamas story in Greece is a tissue of popular tales found in every part of the world. This Itzwe story, as usual, explains the habits of animals, vultures, and dogs, and illustrates the awful cruelties of Egbo law. Six, the pretty stranger is a native variant of Judith and Holofernes. Seven, a just-so story, a myth to explain the ways of animals. The cauldron of Medea, which destroyed the wrong old person and did not rejuvenate him, is introduced. All the stories have been told, all the world over. Eight, the disobedient daughter who married a skull. This is most original. Though all our ballads and tales about the pretty girl who was carried to the land of the dead by her lover's ghost, Burgers Lenore, have the same fundamental idea. Then comes in the common moral, the reward of courtesy, as in Perrault's Les Fées. But the machinery of the Nigerian romance leads up to the return of Proserpine from the dead in a truly fanciful way. Nine, the king who married the cock's daughter is Aesop's man who married the woman that had been a cat. As Adia Unan pecks at the corn, the other lady caught and ate a mouse. 10. The woman, the ape, and the child. This tale illustrates Igbo juridicature, juridicature very powerfully and is told to account for a Nigerian marriage law. 11. The fish and the leopard's wife. Another just so story. 12. The bat. Another explanation of the nocturnal habits of the bat. The tortoise appears as the wisest of things, like the hare in North America, brer rabbit, the bushman mantis insect, and so on. 13, 14, 15. All of these are explanatory, just so stories. 16. Why the sun and moon live in the sky? Sun and moon in savage myth, lived on earth at first. But the Nigerian explanation of their retreat to the sky is as far as I know, without parallel elsewhere. 17, 18, just so stories. 19, quite an original myth of thunder and lightning, much below the divine dignity of such myths elsewhere. Thunder is not the voice of Zeus or of Bayame, the father, Australian, but of an old sheep. The gods have not made the Nigerians poetical. Twenty, another just so story. Twenty one, the cock who caused a fight illustrates private war and justice among the natives and shows the Igbos refusing to admit the principle of a fine in atonement for an offense. 22. The affair of the hippopotamus and of the tortoise, a very curious variant of the Wipitie story, or Tom Tit Tot story, depending on the, on the power conferred by learning the secret name of an opponent. These secret names are conferred at Australian ceremonies. Any amount of the learning about secret names is easily accessible. 23. Why dead people are buried. Here we meet the creator so common in the religious beliefs of Africans as of the most barbarous and savage peoples. The creator was a big chief. The Eo, the Ulai Bayame is rendered big man by Mrs. Langlo Parker. See the Ulai tribe. 
The myth is one of the worldwide diffusion. The myth is one of worldwide diffusion, explaining the origin of death, usually by the fable of a message forgotten and misrendered from the creator. 24. The fat woman who melted away. The revival of this beautiful creature from all that was left of her, the toe, is an incident very common in folk tales, i.e. the Scottish ration koti. The word dowry is used throughout where bride price would better express the institution. The Homeric eva is meant. Just a quick side note, in Nigeria, dowry is substituted for the word bride price. So culturally, it is the correct term. 25. The leopard, the squirrel, and the tortoise. A just-so story. 26. Why the moon waxes and wanes. A lunar myth. Not a poetical, though a kindly explanation of the habits of the moon. 27. The story of the leopard, the tortoise, and the bush rat. A just-so story. 28. The king and the juju tree. This is a fine example of juju beliefs and of an extraordinary sacrifice to a juju power located in a tree. Goats, chickens, and white men are common offerings, but seven baskets of flies might propitiate Beelzebub. The spirit man, who can succeed when sacrifice fails, chooses the king's daughter as his reward, as is usual in Martin. Compare Melampus and Peru in Greece. The skull in spirit land here plays a friendly part in advising the princess, like, Prosper, like Proserpine, not to eat among the dead. This caution is found everywhere in the Greek version of Orpheus and Eurydice, in the Kaliwala, and in Scott's Wandering Willie's Tale, in Red Gauntlet. Like Orpheus, the girl is not to look back while leaving spirit land. Her successful escape by obeying the injunctions of the skull is unusual. 29. How the tortoise overcame the elephant in the hippopotamus. A just-so story with the tortoise as cunning as Br'er Rabbit. 30. Of the pretty girl and the seven jealous women. Here, the good little bird plays the part of the popinjay who up and spake with good effect in the first ballads. The useful juju man divines by casting lots, a common method among the Zulus. The revenge of the pretty girl's father is certainly adequate. 31. How the cannibals drove the people from Insofa Mountain to the cross river, Ikom. This professes to be historical and concerns human sacrifices to cool the new yams and cannibalism. 32 is unimportant. In 33, we find the ordeal poison which destroys 50 witches. 34, the slave girl who tried to kill her mistress is a form of our common tale of the waiting maid who usurps the place of her mistress, the bride. The resurrection of the bride from the water at the cry of her little sister occurs in a remote quarter among the Samoyeds in Castrin's Samoyedishi Marchin. But there, the opening is in the style of Asterinos and Pulja, Phrixus and Heli, in Van Hans, Grichish Marchin. The false bride story is an ancient French chanson de geste, part of the legend of the mother of Charlemagne. The story also occurs in Calloway's collection of Zulu fairy tales. In the Nigerian version, the manners customs and cruelties are all thoroughly West African. 35. The king and the insiat bird accounts as usual for the habits of the bird and also illustrates the widespread custom of killing twins. 36. Reflects the well-known practices of poison and the ordeal by poison. 37. Is another just-so story. 38. The drummer and the alligators. In this grim tale of one of the abominable secret societies, the human alligators appear to be regarded as being capable of taking bestial form, like werewolves or the leopards of another African secret society. 39. 
and 40 are both picturesque, just so stories, so common in the folklore of all countries. The most striking point in the tales is the combination of good humor and good feeling with horrible cru cruelties and the reign of terror of the Igbos and lesser societies. European influences can scarcely do much harm apart from whiskey in Nigeria. As to religion, we do not learn that the creator receives any sacrifice. In savage and barbaric countries, he usually gets none. Only jujus, whether ghosts or fiends in general, are propitiated. The other is too high and too far. I have briefly indicated the stories which have variants in ancient myth and European marchand or fairy tales. Written by Andrew Lang. Footnotes. Number one. See the Platonic Dialogue, Minos, 315-316, and Atamas in Rocher's Lexicon. Although I did say I would continue to read um, the first story, I'm going to end right here, and then you can find the first story in another video. I think it'll be good to split them up at this point in time. Thank you so much for joining me in reading this introduction. I will now go on to read the first story, but it will be in a different video. So um, thank you so much for your patience and your kindness. Sorry if there was any external noise, there are cars driving by and children having the time of their lives outside. And I hope my phone did not ding too loudly, but I will put that on silent. So thank you again once more for listening to me read. I really appreciate you. Goodbye.